what row spacing should I use, and what planting population should I run with? Those are two of the most popular questions that we've gotten over all the years we've done Ag PhD, so we want to talk about those just a little bit today. It's one of those things that a lot of times you look across the fence line and you say, man, my neighbor's in a different row spacing as me. I wonder if it's working out better <laughs> for him or if it's working out better for me. You know, and then that planting population too, you're always second guessing yourself. Wow, you know, should I put another couple thousand plants out there per acre? Would it have made a difference? Those are some difficult questions. Okay, so here are some of the basic things that you need to consider if you're going to be changing your row spacing or your planting population. Number one is fertility. This is one of the most common mistakes I see. If guys switch to twin rows or they really up their planting population, they leave their fertility the same. Well, if you're switching to twin rows with the hopes of getting better yield, or you're gonna up your population with the hopes of getting better yield, make sure you feed the crop. If you don't give the crop extra food, how are you gonna produce more yield? So that's a huge thing. The next thing is disease resistance. When you get narrower row spacing or just more planting population, you have more plants out there, you're gonna have a more dense canopy. There's gonna be less air movement through there. You're more likely to get diseases. So you have to have more tolerant varieties. Well, we definitely saw it this year when we did a twin row study on corn. We narrowed those rows up a little bit by doing the twin row and all of a sudden you just couldn't look through that crop and see daylight. When you looked over in our 30 inch rows we thought wow they're pretty dark in between the rows. No you could see some sunlight coming through 30 inch row corn compared to what you could see in the twin rows and that's really what makes a difference. When you get a little bit of sun in there that helps a lot on fighting disease but it's also energy wasted so there's a trade-off there. Where you have twin rows you're going to capture almost all of that sunlight that's more energy that your plants can take in and theoretically more corn you could produce. Yep, so we do think the overall concept of higher populations and narrower row spacings is good, but it doesn't always translate into yield. So for example, this year in our farm, we went 40,000 versus 36,000. Guess what? Gained nothing. We also did twin row versus 30 inch row in 40,000 planting population, gained nothing. When we did it at 36,000 population, we gained a little bit, a little over seven bushels we gained. In other a words- A little bit? Well, a little bit, seven bushels times well, four yeah, and a half, five dollars, yeah, that's but, 30 or 35 dollars an acre. It, well, it is if that's if you can repeat that. We just haven't been able to repeat that in the past. So one year's worth of data in one field, you know, I don't know if I want to bank everything in the whole farm to go that way. And the other thing is, if you're going to switch to twin rows, that's going to cost money to get that planter. You've got a lot more to pull through the field. Yes, but it's here's the benefit of going. Power, and you may have to switch your corn. Well, head sounds and that like kind you've got thing. your decision all made up, right? I was thinking <laughs> twin rows are great because we don't have to switch everything over because now we're going to stay on our 30 inch row spacing and a lot of our equipment will still work through that twin. Well, okay, well, what are you going to do for a planter? Because we've got a uh, 60 well, foot that's, planter that's right the now. challenge and yeah, that's, 24 the, that's row the big expense is right. switching over that planter. Right, you're not going to have a 60 foot twin row planter so now you have to go back to 40 feet. Well, do you really want to take half again as long to plant all the corn? I don't really think that we do. I mean, if we were gaining a lot, then we would do it. Well, I'd get two get planters. Back to, let's get back to $100 <laughs> an hour jobs, Brian. If we're talking about 30 or $35 an acre that we're going to gain all depends on, on, if on we our can farm, that. that's about $50,000 over our corn acres. So well, anyway, so it here's... Takes us 50 <laughs> percent more time well we get a hundred dollars an hour Brian okay, I think so, we will. And we just talked about corn here we didn't even get into soybeans because we can have the same debate it's one of those things well, soybeans is every every too. area of the country is going to be a little different you've got to make this decision on your own but I'll just tell you again the main things you got to look at are fertility and disease control if you can manage those things well going to narrower row spacing and higher populations usually will pay well if you thought that was a fun debate just wait until <laughs> we get to our weed of the week it's coming up next.